the talk shop. It is the talk shop with myself, Naledi Molawa, standing in this evening for Maschaba Mushweshwe. The time is four minutes after eight. And welcome to the second hour of the talk shop. And we're going to be taking a look at, uh, we're going into our relationship corner firstly. And we'll take a look at one-sided friendships. And after that, we're going to take a look at the African Women's Month celebration that is put together by Bopa Bopa Muso Investment. So we'll be speaking to them at 20 to 9. Right now, though, it is time for our relationship corner. And as I mentioned, we're talking about one-sided Sided friendships. Friendships are supposed to be meaningful and long lasting, not one sided. Do you ever get the feeling that you're stuck in a one sided relationship? And if you do, give us a call on 0891 104 207. That number again is 0891 104 207. The SMS line is 34701. SMS line is 34701. Remember that SMSs are charged at two rands. So do call in or send in an SMS if you've got questions or comments. We're talking about one-sided friendships. What are the signs? Have you experienced a, a friendship? Or are you in the middle of a friendship that you feel you're working? You're doing all the work here and no one else is. We're speaking to Johanna Cleo Vlu. I hope I've said that right. She is a, a registered a clinical psychologist and director at Psych Matters Family Therapy Center in Bedford View. Johanna, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Great. I think it's a very interesting topic. I think many of us are faced with it times. Absolutely. I think every... every Every person goes through it at least once. Did I say your name correct? You Is said that it correct. Oh, I'm so glad. Now let's just talk about it. What are what are the the, the signs that you are in a one sided really, uh, friendship? Okay, you know, friendships that are one sided means that one person tends to put more effort or has an invested uh, has invested um, emotionally more into this relationship, mm. and can leave that person um, feeling very used, angry, resentful, um, and quite sad. So, so, and it, it can become difficult on so many, many levels. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and what do you do? Because I think the question here is a lot of us have gone through that, uh, going through a one-sided relationship. But what is it that you do? Or rather, what are the, what are the typical yes. things that people usually do yes. do? And what's right and what's wrong? Okay, so to answer your question about the signs of an unbalanced friendship, is when you start recognizing that you're the person that's always making the calls or the contact, whether it's phone call, email, Facebook, and you're not really getting a response from the other person. Yeah. For example, one friend fails to contact you only when they need you. And I think that's quite a common one, mm-hmm. where they feel they need a favor and you haven't heard from them in a while. Mm. When the other person um, is, or, the, or, 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 or you're the one always making the plans or trying to organize get-togethers and create activities to keep and revive the, the connection, and there's a lack of interest from the other, uh, the other person. Mm. You know, I, I often talk about um, friendships in any kind of relationship as fair exchange. And fair exchange doesn't necessarily mean you might have a friend that doesn't do very well with making calls and, and connecting, but she might be very good at um, organizing, uh, having dinners at the house. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the kind of um, for, or the form of the, the, the reciprocation needs to be the same. Right. Um, but it, it leaves you feeling wholesome and revived and, and, and connected in a way that that lifts your spirits rather than leaving you feeling um, low and criticized and so forth. And drained. And drained. Absolutely. That's a very yeah. good one. One of the signs that we talk about is so the one is the one-sidedness when you feel like everything's coming from your side and it's mm. really out of balance. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, an example would be this is when you, you're the one making the calls, the texting, the, the emailing and so forth. Mm-hmm. When, when the relationship becomes dishonest, either that you feel that you cannot be honest to this person because, because they cannot hear um, how you're really feeling, they cannot hold that. Um, or you feel that this person's always lying to, to divert connecting with you, making excuses to connect with you. Sure. And you start recognizing that, is this person seeing you as, a, as some sort of priority or do they value in the same way that you do? Mm. Are they trying to hide the truth? Are they trying to hide themselves from you? Other mm. kind of symptoms that you can look for is, how, how does your self-worth feel when you're with them? Do you feel low? Do you feel lifted? Do you feel that they're jealous of you or do they feel they admire you or, 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 or are proud of you? Mm. And so these are some things that you can ask yourself. When, you, when you're with this person, do you feel revived and, and lifted? Mm-hmm. Um, and then also very, very important is to come to some sort of conclusion that 
maybe at some point you've come to uh, the cycle of the friendship where it has ended. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there is a saying that some friends are, um, you know, there's a reason for a friendship, there's a season for a, for a friendship, and maybe the season has come to an end. And to really sit down and have, have the courage to, to face and explore the real difficult question around, maybe I don't want to be with this friend anymore. Maybe I genuinely don't like this person anymore because of value systems that have changed, because of life events that have changed, because you view the world in a very different in a different way. And you so grow, yeah. I think it's really important to be honest with yourself mm-hmm. and to actually recognize that perhaps if you're feeling this way, perhaps your friend feels the exact same way too and um, it's just a matter of, of, of bringing it to the light. Um, and it's actually one of the questions I wanted to ask you is that do friendships take strain or start to become one-sided uh, because of the fact that, you know, you become friends with someone at a certain age and you grow and, and, and you grow in different directions and, 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 and that perhaps does put a, st- a strain on the friendship. How do I perhaps then speak to a friend when I feel like I am doing all the work here? Mm-hmm. So the, the question then is, am I staying this friendship out of obligation, of obligation, out of fear of of hurting this person, or fear of or, or needing the, the need to please this person, mm. or am I really in this friendship because it's my choice? You know, family we we can't choose our family, but we can choose our friends. I'm sure most you know youngsters have heard that from their parents at some point in their lives. I certainly have. And, and, and so it's to ask yourself, you know, do I really want to be in this friendship or am I staying here for, for, for what reason? Mm. But to, to answer your question is when you're having to face a difficult question, do I bring this up and have the serious chat with a friend or do I just take a step back and withdraw and let life unfold in the way that it needs to? When, when do I break it up or when do I do the talk? Mm-hmm. And how do you do the talk? I think that was also one of your questions. Mm-hmm. So the question then really is, is if you really have a good friend, a good friend won't allow or you won't really allow for any resentments or underlying difficult emotions to to filter or, 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 or spill through this friendship in terms of tension and so forth. So a, a kind of friend that will make time to listen and hear you is, is very important mm-hmm. um, in, in, in some of the ingredients of, of, of being a good friend and having a good friend. Okay, well, we're speaking to Johanna Cleovalu, who is a registered clinical psychologist and director of Psych uh, Matters Family Therapy Center in Bedford View. So we're going to take some of your callers or some of your calls. Uh, call us on 0891-104-207. That's 0891-104-207. You can also SMS us on 34701. We're talking about one-sided friendships. Are you in the middle of a one-sided friendship? Do you think that um, you are doing all the work in this friendship? Or could it be the other way around? Do you feel like you have a friend that that works really hard to keep your friendship and you just don't know how to say, look, I think we've outgrown each other. Call us and ask Joanna a question if you'd like to or just give us your comment or question. Tell us how you dealt with that situation. Um, Joanna, a very interesting thing actually that I think has definitely happened to a lot of us is we've also been on the other side of, mm-hmm. of that situation when you feel like this person is putting in all the work. Why do you not then, why does that person not then break the friendship? Off. Sure. I think the, the, the question probably comes down to number one, boundaries. Right. Um, and it sounds quite, I'm sure if you've heard of psychologists, they always bring that up. Um, either, again, is it because you feel obligated or do you, do you feel afraid to hurt this person's feelings? Mm. Or are you afraid that this person will not hear you? Um, but for many, many people, one of the basic fears that we all have is fear of rejection. Right. And so this really... Um, drives right down to either I will, she, this person will see me in a different light should I tell them honestly how I feel about this friendship. Maybe the dynamics have been very different and um, the, or, the, or, the, or the balance has been one-sided all along and you've perpetuated. So you that's wanting the space has been feeding this friendship without putting healthy boundaries up. In other words, always um, meeting this person's need, always taking up the invites, um, always being polite in a way that doesn't tell them the truth about where you're at and how you feel. Right. So I think you, you possibly might be perpetuating this out-of-balance um, pattern. Um, so it's really important to ask yourself, what have I done? How have I co-created this experience with this person? Mm-hmm. And again, you might be the kind of person that has attempted to reach out and communicate you know, your need for space or the need for um, for time out or because you've been really busy and you know you've been very preoccupied with deadlines and work and family and children um, and that your focus and your energies do lie elsewhere that they're not hearing you 
um, sometimes that you get to that place and then you need to make the call. Okay, well, I want to read an SMS here that says, Hi, now, lady, if you're always the one calling, texting, planning things, then you should give it a break for a while and see what happens. Mm-hmm. That's uh, the best one-sided friendship test. That's Monica. And then we actually also have Monica, another Monica on the line. I'm, I'm wondering if it's the same Monica. Monica, hello. Uh, hi, now, lady. Yes, it's the same Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for How calling in. I'm very well. What's your comment? You want to repeat that again? <laughs> uh, no, no. I actually just wanted next, actually to add to that. Hmm. Like... um. I was listening in now. I think you were discussing the point about like when you're dealing with different things in your life, like right. you're in different places, mm-hmm. for example, in terms of work and deadlines and commitments. Mm. And like say your friend is not in the same place and they kind of feel like you're being flaky with plans or when stuff is planned, right. you don't follow through. Right. Like where it's not really intentional, but it's mm. just because of circumstances. Mm-hmm. Like how do you deal um, with such a situation? Yeah, that is a very good point as well, because as friends, we go through different phases in our lives where we're never at the same place at the same time. So you want to you what we need to then figure out how do you deal with that? How do you how do you how do you make sure that you can you can keep the friendship going uh, without then breaking it? But we're going to continue speaking to Joanna Cleo Valu right after this. The Talk Shop. This is the talk shop with myself, Naledi Mulewa, 104 to 107, SAFM, South Africa's news and information leader, standing in this evening for Maschaba Mushweshwe. We're still speaking to Joanna Cleovalu, who is a registered clinical psychologist and director of Psych Matters Family Therapy Center in Bedford View. Um, she's, talking to, she's talking to us about one sided friendships, and Monica actually sent in an SMS. And she called in asking two different questions, very important questions, actually. The first one was, um, if I feel like I'm the one that's constantly giving this friendship, what should I do? Uh, should my response then be to stay away from that friend for a very long time and see what happens? You know, one of the strategies that I also suggest is give your friendship a little bit of space. Mm. Um, you, you might not even know what this person is going through. Right. So maybe for whatever reasons there's something very personal and private, for all you know that, that, that they're experiencing, perhaps they really are going through a lot of deadlines and a lot of pressures and a lot of stress. Um, and perhaps they've just lost the way at some point. So stepping away can be a good strategy without um, being forceful towards your friend you know, mm-hmm. and, and confronting your friend. To step away for a while and space can often give people perspective. So I think it is a really good strategy. Mm-hmm. And then the other question that Monica brought up was, you know, when you on the other on the on the on the receiving end of of or the person that's not wanting to engage because of your own commitments, right. you know, how do you let your friend know that this is actually what's going on for you and that it's not an intentional act of avoidance? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's important and just to rehash, you know, what are the traits of a good friend? And and we all kind of, I think it's a growing experience. Um, I've been a recipient or a, I've had the experience of having friends where I'm five minutes late and all hell will break loose. <laughs> and I've had the experience where there's been no pressure and we contact each other, other whenever the thought crosses our minds and right. we see each other whenever we can. And so I've had those extremes and I think we can all relate to something like that. Mm-hmm. But a friend makes you feel comfortable with yourself so you don't need to act like something you're not. There's no obligation or pressure and you are loved for who you are with all your shortcomings. Right. Um, and, and if you can share with your friend and help them understand that your intention is not to avoid them, but it's the circumstance that you're in, a good friend will understand. And, and even though they'll let you know that it makes them feel alienated or lost without you or left out for a while, um, if you can make a commit- commitment to connect with that friend at some point, it'll yeah. give them some peace of mind that you haven't forgotten them, popping them an e- SMS, texting, the, texting them, um, putting a, a little notice on Facebook that takes two minutes of your time right. just to let them know that you really are thinking of them and it's not that you don't want to see them but at this particular time it's really difficult mm-hmm. well you know another thing is uh, you, I've seen it a lot in female friendships as well uh, where I think the way that friendships start perhaps is, is part of the as part of the reason why you see a lot of pressure in friendships. I mean, is it a problem if, if, if especially we see it a lot with women, where the friends start to get very close very, very soon? Does that put a lot of pressure on the friendship? It's possible because it kind of sets a tone as to what is to be expected. Right. And it's not only with friendships. I think this can spill over into relationships as well, romantic relationships. We start off for the first couple of months being in the honeymoon phase where everything's great. Um, you know, often we feel quite free. There's no... Um, 
you know, holding back. Mm -hmm. And as we get to know the person deeper, then the power struggle starts setting in. And then we want to fight for our space, whether it's space to talk, our voice, whether it's um, having your own needs met uh, and then finding the compromise and finding that balance in in, in giving and receiving. Mm. Mm. Well, does jealousy play a factor in, 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 does jealousy play a role in a way? Absolutely. I see that very often with the very young children that I see in how it manifests in adulthood as well. Mm. And it's quite typical in, in threesome relationships when you've got three very good friends. Right. And uh, then it's again, you know, how much time do you spend with that one? And it's comparing and it's um, the gossiping or the, the, the oversharing, leaving the other person out. Right. Um, that, that's one way that it manifests. Another manifestation of jealousy is often when you feel there's a lack inside of you and you see something in that other person that you don't have. Oh, in, yes. the, in the negative way, it's manifested as jealousy. Okay. In the positive, it's manifested as uh, admiration and, and feeling pride for that person. But I think jealousy is an experience, we, you know, or a trait or a feeling that we all feel at some point. We just need to learn to manage it right. and need to recognize on what continuum in, is this showing up in my life that it's becoming toxic, not only for them, but for me as well. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really hope I'm not the only one that's mm-hmm. listening to you speak and getting all these light bulb moments and remembering certain uh, friendships in, in my life as well. And I hope that this is happening for everyone else that's listening as well. Um, we have an SMS that came in that says, I've been there. Delete their numbers. Because if you don't, you will always feel used. Is that a way just to cut off uh, the relationship like that? You know, again, um, if, you've, if we spoke about the signs that it is one-sided and you feel that you've done everything to, to keep the connection alive with no um, effort whatsoever from the other person, right. or you feel often minimized or belittled by the person, you're not getting any sense of, of positivity from the friendship, then perhaps cutting ties is is the last straw. Mm. If you've attempted to communicate with this person, if you've attempted to to share with them how you feel um, and how their behavior impacts you and they're not hearing you and the pattern persists, mm-hmm. um, then perhaps that is, it's, you know, to end relationships. And I always say where there's an ending, there's also a new beginning. Mm-hmm. And perhaps you need to also be, like I said, courageously honest with yourself and revisit what this relationship meant for you. Right. Well, where were the highs and the lows and, and where to from here, yeah, perhaps... You've been pushing uh, an issue or pushing a friendship that in reality needed to you know, end quite a while back. And you're actually leaving yourself stuck mm-hmm. and you're stunting your own growth at the end of the day. I think that we've, we've been talking so much about, you know, if you are a one-sided, if you, if you feel like you're in a one-sided friendship and you're the one that's constantly giving, we were talking a lot about how to end the friendship. But what if you really do want to stay in this friendship and perhaps, you know, there is something that you've done, you haven't given this person enough space or, or whatever it may be. What's the way to approach it then? Because it's, if it's a friendship you really value and you don't want to let it go and you want to keep uh, the communication lines open, what, what's the best way to go about this? Sure. And again, one of the, the signs of a healthy relationship is being able to communicate um, disagreement or conflict with this person that they're able to hold what you have to say even if it's something they don't like to hear so that one of the ingredients is to be able to share honestly how you feel about a situation and being able to argue in a healthy way that's not destructive or belittling so it's to be able to talk about something honestly and not hurting the the person purposely so being kind but honest Mm And um, so if you're able to do that, is to, to sit the person down, make time, a, a time that's convenient for both of you, mm. and letting them know just how much you miss the friendship and this is how you feel since they've been doing X, Y, Z. So point out the behavior. Let them know how it makes you feel and, then, and give them some ideas about what it is you'd like to, to do to reconnect in, in a way mm-hmm. and find a way that, that might, might meet both your needs. For, for some reason, they might be busy. They've got other priorities. They've got other deadlines. They've got a commitment. They have a husband that might not want too many friends and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, so find a way that makes both people feel that they, they, they're satisfied walking away. Okay. Uh, we're speaking to Joanna Cleo Valu, who's a registered clinical psychologist and director of Psych Matters uh, Family Therapy Center in Bedford View. Got another four minutes left with her, so I'd like to invite a few calls if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Joanna. The number is 0891 104 207 Also SMS us on 34701. That's 34701. I think there's a, there's a very different 
uh, kind of friendship dynamics when you look at men and then you look at women and how uh, friends relate to each other uh, with the genders. Um, do you think that uh, women are more are more inclined to having one sided friendships, or or is it the same across the board? I'm actually starting to see change. Yeah. Um, I'm finding men a lot more aware and con- and in touch with um, emo- the emotion. Mm. They're starting to recognize the importance of connectedness and relationships. Right. You know, often talk about women are relationship driven mm. and men are more rational and, and outcomes driven. Mm-hmm. So I, I really find that that is changing. So, um, but, but on a general stereotypical scale, you know, women thrive on feeling connected, hence the maternal instinct. Right. Um, and, and having to talk to a friend, having to touch base with a friend, that keeps them feel nurtured, understood, um, and that, and that they in some way feel like they belong. Mm. And there's some sort of sisterhood if you think about commun- you know, sense of community. Mm. And I, I love how you mention that because I think a lot of the time if you are in a, in a one-sided friendship, it probably is because you are lonely, mm. you, don't, you don't have a connection with a lot of people around you, you're perhaps a bit lonely. Um, are those things that will make it very easy for you to then stay in that relationship? And, and what should you do? Should you go out and meet new people? For sure, because then it becomes a very codependent relationship right. when you feel completely dependent on that one person for your survival or for, for keeping you uh, psychologically well. Yeah. So one of the another ingredients of a good relation, a healthy relationship or friendship is to be able to encourage other kinds of friendships and, and increasing your friend's social network. Mm-hmm. So that time apart is actually quite good for you and quite healthy. And it gives you some things to talk about and to re- revisit. So so it's really important to, to really... You know, if you're struggling with the sense of trust and you struggle to, to open up to people, you, know, you don't want to be on the other scale where you have no boundaries and everybody's your friend and everybody gets to hear your very deep and darkest personal um, life stories. Mm. Uh, it's about being able to recognize, you know, where is my trust scale? And, and if I do find it very difficult to trust and hence why I'm very dependent or I feel it's very difficult for me to cut the cord with this particular person, right. perhaps visiting a therapist or you know, someone that, that, that is able to counsel you in finding a different way or to build on relationships in a way that's healthy for you mm-hmm. um, and reciprocal, you know, perhaps to go and seek some, some help. Yeah, we actually have an SMS uh, as well that says, now, lady, interesting topic. If I'm one who's always working hard, then what shall I do? This is definitely what I need right now. If you feel that you're in that kind of situation and perhaps you need someone to talk to, um, could 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 the, the, the Psych Matters Family Therapy Center help? Absolutely. We've got clinical psychologists, uh, educational psychologists for kids. Um, we've got couples therapists to address everyone's uh, you know, emotional needs. Okay, well, we're definitely going to get the contact details of the uh, Psych Matters Family Therapy Center out a little bit later on. Thank you so much for speaking to us. That was Joanna Cleovalu, registered clinical psychologist and director of Psych Matters Family Therapy. Family Therapy. Family Therapy.